Hello, my beautiful Tauruses. Welcome back to Queen Cup Tarot. I am just shuffling up right now, catching a vibe, getting ready to do your March 2021 tarot readings. For those that are new, welcome. It's a privilege and honor to read for you, connect with you, and ascend with you. Please like, share, subscribe. It is much appreciated. All right. And to Angel Gang Gang, I just want to thank you guys wholeheartedly for all your likes, shares, subscribes, positively engaging this channel the way you do and doing this thing called Ascension with us. Um, it really means a lot and congratulations because as I'm mentioning in all the videos that it is a really celebratory time for this tribe because of our ascension journey and where we've gotten ourselves. We're really celebrating the end of the karmic cycle, being able to see the new beginnings tangibly, being able to feel the change within you, how you view things, how you feel about things. So there's a lot of relief in the collective, which is cool because Virgo full moon actually is a reflection of relief being bestowed upon the collective but you'd have to be in union with the ecosystem and awakened and conscious to be able to feel that relief. And we are coming to the end of Divine Feminine Season, which represents death and transformation. So we are relieved about all the work we had to do to transform in this season. So um, Divine Masculine Season uh, is marked by the Spring Equinox, which is March 20th. So enjoy, guys. It's going to be a really um, celebratory time in the next two months especially leading into um, April, which is Aries season, okay? Um, I am going to, before I get into the downloads and get into the spread, um, I want to just make a couple of announcements. So for those that timestamp the reading to prior to the prayer, please continue to do so. Um, we've got the website fully stocked up with the smudge kits now, okay? So we've got tons of burners. We got our order in. So they're just the small burners for now. The large burners will come in by the end of this month, so they'll be available for April. And they include um, a large uh, one of these jars here and then one of the small jars. So we include Kartiri and Red Hajari, and you get a brass bar burner and two charcoals. We also have the frankincense and myrrh butter, but that's always a limited quantity because it takes me hours to make it. And, um, and I make them in batches of 20 and 30 at a time. So there are still some left in stock, not many, but then we also have our honey, which is really good. And it's an anti-inflammatory. So it's great if you like to steep your um, resins as teas. So not just burn them, but actually use them as teas. And um, we will be starting to sell the actual essential oil soon. So look out for that, very exciting. Um, for uh, daily and weekly content, you guys can check me out over on Patreon forward slash Queen Cup, where I have finally learned how to go live on there. So not just the lives I do on YouTube, but I also go live over on Patreon as well, which is really nice and fun. And um, I'm going to be using the golden, the golden um, tarot. It's like the classic tarot. I haven't used this in a while, but I got the gold version, which is really nice. And, um, and yeah. I think we can go ahead into prayer and then I'll get into these downloads here. Um, it's a it's a strange kind of energy. It's definitely falling in line with the collective with, with regards to the ending of this karmic cycle and like a real understanding, but it does feel a little bit, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll get into prayer and then we'll get into these downloads and this energy and then start pulling, okay? Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, guardian angels, thank you for rising me up out of my bed this morning and thank you for connecting me with the collective every day. Right now, please allow me to communicate clearly with the collective, all the messages that are in their greatest good surrounding their material abundance, sustenance, the relationships closest to them, their personal ascension and development, and any other messages that you deem worthy at this time. Thank you, Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, guardian angels, for everything you do for me and the collective on a regular. All the healing energy, the support, the love, the guidance, and the protection. We are nothing without it, and we are nothing without you. So glory be to the Most High forever and ever. Amen. Okay, so the messages that I was, the downloads that I was getting coming into the spread was the predator becomes prey and the tables have turned. So I'm not saying that you've become a predator and you're now preying on somebody. But what I do feel is, is that you might be looking at somebody who was very predatorial. So they would take advantage of people and you were kind of, I'm getting the energy towards that you were waiting for karma to strike somebody. And I feel like you had to let go and let God handle it because I feel like some of you guys were trying to become predatorial so that you could make somebody pray instead of leaving it to the universe and seeing how it's really done. And I just feel like somebody is now getting preyed on. So they're getting a taste of their own medicine. I just heard somebody who was maybe preying on you stopped preying on you because they started getting preyed on. 
So um, I'm getting that there, this could be bullying energy. This could have been somebody who was a bully and is now being bullied. This could be, um, it's just really the energy of what somebody has put out there. They're getting back. And it's all that, you know, you always said, like, if there's a bully, there's always a bigger bully. If you're bad, there's always somebody better. And I just feel like that energy is coming out. And I just feel like somehow, Taurus, you're watching this. Okay, and I feel like you are, you left it to God. I feel like you understood enough about the ecosystem, karmic justice, and the way law of attraction works that you didn't want to get your hands dirty. You didn't want to get involved and you didn't want to reap any negative karma by being somebody's lesson. You allowed the universe to teach somebody very valuable lessons about taking people for granted, hurting people, preying on people, right? Preying on, I heard preying on people's downfalls. So for some of you, you knew somebody didn't wish people or you, you could have had somebody who was wishing for your downfall. You knew that somebody was trying to bring you down and hoping the worst for you only for that worst that they were hoping on you happening to them. Okay. So that's what I meant about it was a little like, you know, I'm also getting this whole idea of tables have turned with regards to, I'm feeling like you're getting, so if you've spent a lot of time alone, you're now going to become really active socially if you guys have been single for a long time, tables have turned and you're now going to be in a relationship for potentially a long time. Um, if you were really struggling with finances, I think you allowed Divine Feminine Season to create, you allowed Divine Feminine Season to put a death to all of your doubt, all of your poverty consciousness, a death to certain ways that you would make money that were actually you were holding on to because they were the only ways that you envisioned yourself making money and then you allowed those parts to kind of die and you envisioned yourself being more abundant, doing other things that you love, that you're really good at, so unlocking talents and abilities. So now the tables are turning and you are actually experiencing a lot of abundance. If you guys were going from not getting any opportunities, the tables have turned and now you're getting a lot. If you were going through a time where there was no options available to you, the tables have turned and now there's plenty of available options for you, which doesn't mean there aren't lessons to learn on that abundant side too. You have a lot of options. You're going to need to use your discernment to determine what is the best option for you because everybody wants options and things to choose from until they get them and then they get all clammed up and nervous and like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, right? So yeah, tables have turned, congratulations, but it feels like they turn in your favor. Um, but they tables have turned. There could be people on this platform that are watching that are actually of a lower vibration. So they wish people harm. They wish people, they, 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 they're not of a higher vibration. And I feel like the tables are turning outside of their favor. So they're going to actually learn the very painful lesson that the energy that they were putting out there towards other people has now come back to them. Okay, people were wishing that they weren't successful in whatever success. So if somebody was wishing that you weren't being successful, that 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 success magician, amazing. Um, now they're losing success. I feel like people, there was people, lower vibrational people that were putting their energy in the wrong areas. Okay, they were projecting outside of them, wanting to bring people down so that they felt higher instead of just working on their own ascension and development and then it wouldn't matter where anybody else is on the totem pole they wouldn't have to bring anybody down in order to feel higher they would just have to ascend right to feel higher right so this is somebody who is stuck here and instead of ascending they try to bring other people down so that it justifies their lack of growth and development does that make sense anyways the first three cards that came out is the page of cups the Eight of Swords and the Magician. Um, I am getting that somebody is realizing that they would have to come clean or apologize for something in order to manifest something with you, or this could be you. I'm also getting that some of you guys, Taurus, are realizing that you are trapped in your mind. You're trying to manifest love or a new beginning, a friendship, but you are trapped in your mind and you're, there's a paradigm shift that needs to occur or could have already occurred because Aquarius season really supported the, the mental... Um, breaking out of chains and changing the paradigms, okay? The paradigms, these limiting paradigms that get you to not even manifest, not grow, not develop, not see yourself because with manifestations, you actually have to see it and feel it and then allow it to come in instead of being like, I'll believe it when it comes in. That's not how you manifest. So some of you guys were actually blocking manifestations because you had this 
illusion surrounding you that things couldn't work out. There's no point surrounding manifesting love because the same bullshit will happen. There's no point in being open to this friendship because people always betray me and people are not good to me. So there's this, this illusion that you were creating that was actually restricting you from being able to be open and bring in manifestations into you. And I do see these chains being broken because you go from like this to now like this. Right? But if this is externally to you, I do feel like somebody is trying to manifest you and they're telling themselves all the reasons why they can't manifest you in their life, why they aren't maybe good enough for you. Um, somebody might be thinking that because you are manifesting and have successes that they, and they might not be having successes that you might not see them as a viable option, that you might not see their cup of love as being worthy or good enough, which would have been just a sheer illusion. Why? Because I think you understand this person's come up. I think you understand this person's journey, but I think it's somebody else externally to you that might be telling themselves, no, I'm not understood. They won't understand me. There's no point. I'm also seeing somebody feeling trapped by karma, meaning they need to apologize. And I feel like this is them manifesting it. I don't know if this is really the case because I feel like forgiveness is within whether you actually go externally and forgive people or, or, or apologize to people. You need to do it to God. You need to do it within yourself. Forgive yourself for what you've done and apologize to God for how you dishonored God's children, God's opportunities, gifts, blessings. But I do feel like somebody feels like, oh, okay, somebody feels like there's no point in apologizing, apologizing to you because you won't forgive them. You aren't open to an apology, Taurus. Some people might be looking around you feeling like you're not open to an apology or open to a new beginning with them. Let's see what else. Thank you, Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, and guardian angels. Please allow me to step into service. Okay, the Eight of Wands and the King of Wands. Somebody is determined to break through your boundary. Somebody can see you being as closed off, and the King of Wands is strategic. So the King of Wands has identified that you, or this could be you, but I feel like this is externally to you. The King of Wands has identified that you are closed off, that you are trapped in your mind or an illusion. And I feel like they want to bring in clarity. They're determined to break through a boundary, break through a wall. Some of you could have a lot of walls built up around you that get you to not be open to people. Or, or this could be even somebody trying to pitch to you an idea trying to get you to do something. Yo, you're great at this. You would be great if you do this. And they can see that you are all closed off and have walls and a lot of doubt surrounding your abilities to be able to do things. And there's somebody externally to you very determined to get you to see them, get you to see yourself as the way they see you. Um, I'm also getting that there's somebody, if this is surrounding like um, a new beginning or even apology or a reconciliation, somebody is very determined to get you to see their side of it, get you to really see, because some of you could be like, I'm not open because of, some of you guys are not open to somebody because of something they said or that they did in the past. And this person is very determined to get you to see them in a different light, get you to not just hear their apology, but to see that it's real, that they've changed, I've heard. Some of you guys are really struggling to see somebody as being different than what you remember. And I feel like somebody's very determined to get you to see them in a new light. Somebody sees themselves as being changed and they are realizing you are not seeing them as being changed, but you're not, you're blindfolded. You're just trapped in your memories. I'm seeing these swords as being memories and you're not looking directly at this king of swords. I mean, this king of wands who, who knows that they're different now. This person isn't doubting their change the change that they've made within themselves. Somebody is also willing to take action. So for some of you, you might have this energy could have been like, oh, somebody isn't going to communicate or, oh, I'm not going to hear from them. And that's actually not the case. That was an illusion. Somebody is actually going to reach out to you or this could have been um, the idea that somebody is lying to you and they, they aren't. Let's see what else.
then we have the three of swords and the um, ten of wands. So I do feel like some of you guys actually manifested. You guys went to God and you said, I'm trapped in heartbreak and I don't know how to get out of it. And I do feel like the divine is going to, so essentially you manifested an opportunity to release a heartbreak that you didn't know how to do. You did as much as you could internally, but you're looking for some external support to help you relinquish and release a burden. But you would have to be open to it. Page of Cups, you'd have to be open to it, vulnerable enough to communicate your heartbreak. Hold on, let's see what else. The Three of Cups. Somebody's trying to reconcile with you. Somebody's trying to come together with you. Somebody wants to, because the three of cups plus this page of cups equals the four of cups, which is ignoring something. Yeah, somebody, it's a past soulmate. This could be a soulmate connection. For some of you, this isn't even somebody you really dated. It could have been somebody you tried to date and then something happened and you closed up right away because you were assuming it was just the same old thing that usually happens. So like a self-sabotage type of energy. And some of you guys could be ignoring your desire to want some of you. Some of you guys could have told yourself you're done with somebody and you really aren't. You're ignoring the fact that you want something from somebody still. You want another opportunity. You want to resolve a conflict. You want to give it another go. I just heard. But you are not open to those emotions and those feelings and those thoughts because you are trapped in the past paradigm that tells you this can't change. There can't be any growth development. It will just be the same old, same old thing. For some of you, it would be. But I'm not. I'm tapping into the new timeline. So it wouldn't be. Even if you are reconciling with people from the past, it's doing it on the new timeline. So it would really be like starting over. And then the King of Pentacles. Wow. Wow. And then underneath the deck, the tower, the nine of cups, and the king of cups. There's three kings and the fool. I feel like this is the only king that's missing is the king of swords. I feel like, um, and, and then there's the wheel. The wheel's turning. The tables have turned. So for some of you, there was somebody that I am getting a little bit of this energy of there was somebody that you were really, you were really available to somebody and really hopeful about a connection with somebody and they weren't open and they weren't receptive. And I feel like the tables have turned and now you aren't receptive and open to the connection, but they are really determined to reestablish something with you. And this would only matter if you act, this would only be coming up and matter for you if you actually want it and you're pretending that you don't. Because all that will do was perpetuate the karmic cycle and put you back into a chaser position. Because now you'll be watching this person to see if they really did change instead of give this person an opportunity to show you that change within a connection. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to pull from the um, the Hoodoo Tarot. So I'm actually using this one as the Oracle. So I'm going to read one of the major arcana that comes out, out of the book. But we are going to pull from this deck and see what else we get. I'm also getting that there is an energy of... I'm also getting that there could be some of you guys in the workplace were in conflict with somebody who was matched at your level. So it could be two bosses. It could be there wasn't like a, a hierarchy. So it wasn't a conflict between you and your boss. It was like it, it, there was there was there was a matched energy here because I'm seeing there's some communication between the King of Wands and the King of Pentacles. For some of you, it's. For some of you, my feminines, it could be two masculines communicating about you. It could be your father communicating with another a masculine you're romantically involved with. There could be a masculine asking for your hand in marriage and is heartbroken because this masculine, the father says no. Um, I've gotten that before. Somebody could be trying again. 
somebody's father could actually be karmic energy and is is negatively getting involved in a relationship where they need not it's like it's like for some of you you forgive your partner but your father doesn't forgive your partner and is now creating a conflict and not allowing for a transformation to occur in a relationship um for some of you, this is uh, you're getting a lot of downloads surrounding money and how to make money. Like, I feel like you're getting a lot of creative ideas like, oh, I can do this. I can do this. This will be lucrative. I want to give this shot, this idea a shot. The five of knives. And I looked at this magician with the three of swords and the, um, the six of cups, the five of knives. This deck is really rare. It's not rare, but it's very hard to get. It sells out really, really quickly. And I wanted to get it for Black History Month, but it doesn't even matter. I feel like the universe was like, don't play into that. History is something that we need to educate ourselves about all year round. Okay, so anyways, I just, I was so, I literally went on Amazon and there was one left. And I'm like, it's for me. I've been, every time I go, it's sold out. But anyways, the five of knives so there is a conflict and then the five plus the three equals the eight. Some of you guys are trying to manifest a reconciliation with somebody, but you're actually blocking this manifestation in because you're trapped in your mind. You're like, I want this reconciliation to occur. I want to get back with this person, but you're trapped in your mind about what occurred in the past. And it's probably because you aren't seeing yourself because this, this union is divinely guided to come back into reconciliation for you to give it another go, Wheel of Fortune, another go. Then it would, and it would be actually like a new relationship. This is, this is, um, what was I going to say? I feel like there's a lack of forgiveness. I feel like you're trapped in what has occurred in the past. I'm getting you want to reconcile with somebody. You're creating conflict to your own manifestation. You would have to be willing to see the change in yourself in another person in order for and meaning you would have to be able, open to seeing the change in yourself and another person, but also would have had to forgive yourself in order to forgive another person. That's the only way I see this reconciliation occurring. Um, courting. Yep. Yeah, that's the lovers in this deck. And then the seven of baskets, which is the seven of cups. This is confusion about a reconciliation. So for some of you, you actually have somebody from the past who's come to you in a very vulnerable energy, asking for a new beginning from you, asking for your forgiveness. And if you can't give this person forgiveness, it's because you don't forgive yourself, meaning you don't trust yourself. You don't forgive yourself for embarking in the relationship instead of realizing you embarked in that relationship to learn very valuable karmic lessons. Have you learned them? Great. So, okay, let's move on. You don't also trust yourself to be able to see and identify the change in somebody else to know if it would really be different because you don't know how to identify and see the change that has occurred in you, whether it actually has or not. So there's some emotional confusion that you have surrounding a manifestation of somebody from your past. You're, 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 you're struggling and I also feel like there's a little bit of this in denial energy. You tell yourself you don't want anything from the past, but essentially you actually do. The problem is, is you are afraid. You are afraid. Okay, um, we are going to read that one. And then the Ten of Sticks, this came out in Virgo's reading as well. This is a heavy energy because like I said, I started the reading telling you guys, congratulations, <clears throat> congratulations. And this is what I'm saying congratulations for. It's dropping the burden and ending this karmic cycle. You usually end a painful karmic cycle with the Ten of Wands or the Ten of Swords. Right? The Three of Sticks. These are preparations of the Two of Sticks of a new path. But you're conflicted because the Three of Fire and the Two of Fire equals the Five of Wands. So you, are, you guys are in conflict with a manifestation you're going to the ethers, you're saying you still care about somebody, you still want somebody, but then when it comes, when the divine shows it to you, you can't get past the conflict of something that with somebody. This could even be career-wise. You want to work with somebody, but you can't get past the conflict. 
you want to stay somewhere, but you can't forgive what has occurred. There, there is this, um, but anyways, we're going to read, um, we're going to read the courting out of this deck here. I love this deck. I'm going to read it like a book. I just got it. So I haven't really studied it yet, but we'll learn it together. Okay. Courting for, th for there are three that testify. Whoa. For there are three that testify, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree. 1 John verse 5, or I don't know how it goes. It's 5, 7, 8. I would actually look up angel number 5, 7, 8. But anyways, um, the plant is squash leaves and the image. A couple is walking down the road, road holding hands. They are oblivious to the judgment of the two elders watching them. Because they're so into each other, it's clear from her facial expression that the woman's grandma isn't as enthused about the match as, as his appeared to be. Remember I was telling you about this, this person, whether it's a grandparent, whether it's a father, mother, there's somebody who isn't pleased about this connection or this union or, or this um, reconnection of a couple. There used to be a time when people understood the distinction between dating and courting. Dating was a lighthearted activity that gave a man and a woman a chance to get to know each other. Not only was it perfectly fine to call on different people, but it would also be considered unwise not to keep one's options open. However, when the two people decided they wanted to see each other exclusively, that's when the courtship stage began. The goal of courtship was not to have a companion for years, as is common nowadays. The goal was marriage. That being the case, courtship was taken very seriously and had to include the input of family members and close friends to determine the worth of such an investment. The reason for this is simple. Most people didn't marry just because they loved each other. They married for the purpose of social and economic upward mobility. It was often more of a business transaction than a testament to underlying love. Therefore, it only made sense that each other's partner's community be included in the decision as, per, as it pertained to the propriety and auspiciousness of the match. After all, a poor choice, literally or figuratively, reflected badly on the entire family by ruining their reputation or, or causing their progeny to, the progeny to suffer or unstable or impoverished home. Thus, merely loving the other was simply not enough if the family was to consistently improve from one generation to the next. To marry an unimproved beau always, anyway was therefore considered not love at all, but the epitome of selfishness. <clears throat> wow. Meaning, though this card is certainly above about love and romance, it doesn't have to be. There are many different types of relationships as well as unspoken contracts that keep them together. We all, we are all given our attention to someone or something. We are all giving our attention to something or someone. When courting comes up in a reading, it is asking you to appraise the value of your attachment in terms of your individual long-term goals. Will continuing to engage with that person, those people, or that thing help advance you or your reputation among the kind of people you respect or with whom you want to do business? With that presence helps or harm, will that presence help or harm your efforts to attain the life you visualize? It's time to review your ethics and make an honest assessment of the road you're choosing. It's time to make a choice. If you, if you receive courting in a reading, consider the following. What binds you to her, him, this, or that? Is that healthy? Is that how you really feel? Or are you parroting someone else? Make up your mind. What is your philosophy of life? And how does that inform this relationship? What is your, what is your commit fully to this? Is the passion, love, desire, desire reciprocal? Cute doesn't last. Are your morals, values, and goals aligned? Are you both on the same page or do you have entirely different books? The moral to the story is... Okay, I downloaded a lot about this because that is really new timeline. 
because a lot of you guys stepped onto your destined and faded, faded paths. You stepped into mission. You became clear about who you are and where you were trying to go and what you're trying to fulfill in this lifetime, i.e. you've unlocked your Akashic records. Many of you guys are going to be bringing in friends, especially romantic partners, and needing to determine, yes, there's love here, but there's a difference between loving somebody and wanting to be with them. Determining what gets you to want to be with somebody. That's what that was asking. What really gets you to want to be some, with somebody? What gets you attached to them? Is it just about love? Because what I really feel is the choice is your choice in love should never, should be a reflection of your love of self and what you chose for yourself and not put you in conflict of it. Meaning I, I, I'm either going to have to love this person or I'm going to, or I can go on my path. Because for some of you, there is a romantic partner that you're going to come into union with that, whether from the past or somebody new that you really feel a connection to, but they challenge either your morals, your values, or where you're trying to go in life. So they don't believe what you believe. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't feel connected to what is important to you. So it would put what's important to you in a compromise, in conflict. Remember the five of, we had the five of wands in conflict. It's really determining if somebody is a reflection of where you're trying to go or if they put you in conflict with where you're trying to go. Hmm. Yeah, the seven of pentacles, the speaks of your investment. I feel like you're trying to determine if before, I feel like the tables have turned because I feel like in the past, you were trying to determine if you fit in other people's life. You were more consumed about adjusting yourself and fitting into other people's life so that they wouldn't drop you and see you as valuable and hold on to you as much as you were trying to hold on to them. Where now the tables have turned and you are trying to determine, does somebody fit into my investment, what I have going on? Somebody's offering you commitment. They're offering you a pinnacle, but you're wondering if it fits in with what you already have going I feel like for some of you, this parent isn't actually a karmic. They're actually trying to advise you not to forget what's important to you. Where for some of you, it and Five of Swords again, the title card. Um, some of you guys, some of you guys actually detoured from your past, detoured from your path in the past because so you either didn't do something that you wanted to do or you left and moved away from something that you were doing that you really loved because of a romantic interest because it, they either didn't think it was a good idea they were pulling you in a different direction some of you guys have already learned that really valuable lesson and have already gone through that karmic cycle some of you are about to you're going to be challenged to let go of something that you've invested in for love that is not that is going to put you on a serious karmic cycle. It's going to be very painful where you're going to regret it. Where you do that for this person, it could be a job opportunity that you were really excited about that you've really wanted, but your partner's like, well, I want to do this, or I'm moving here, come with me, or something like this. And you now reject this opportunity only for this person to leave you in a couple of months. And now you are out of that love that you were so attached to, but also the investment of self that you had made that was trying to bring in a harvest for you. The Ace of Pentacles, yeah, and you're stressed. And then the Ten of Pentacles. Look at you stressed. You're stressed about something that's being offered to you. It could be because you have a lot of outside pressure. You have a bunch of people, your family, your community, that is putting a lot of pressure on you to make a decision in love or even career that benefits the whole village. And it's putting you maybe in conflict of what you see. And you have to understand, though, collective, I get needing to do it for the village, like the book says. But the fact of the matter is, if you're truly enlightened and awakened, you, the, you trusting your instincts to take opportunities that are best for you are going to be best for the village, period, point blank. But I feel like the village could be putting you in conflict with your own self. So this could be a lover. This could be family. This could be friends. I feel like you're going to be challenged to walk away from something you don't want to walk away from because you see it as a blessing from God. You're pulled between your community or a lover and or a lover and an opportunity. Because for some of you, this opportunity is offered, it's a commitment by a lover. 
and you're getting a lot of pushback from your family, your friends or community. Some of you guys are stressed about how your romantic partner will be accepted by your community or some of you guys are stressed about what your community will think about an opportunity that you have been given or that you want to seek out or that you're being offered. Some of you are telling me, I don't know, I, I, somebody's not going to be happy. It's either you or them, the hangman, the six of swords, and the ace of cups. Yeah, this is taking a different perspective on a romantic opportunity. I feel like a romantic partner wants to take you in a particular direction. And it's, it's hard to say this, this romantic partner could be absolutely a reflection of you and what you truly want that puts you in conflict with your community that thinks they know what's best for you and what you should do. But the fact of the matter is, is you're put on this earth to do things that ascend not just you, but your whole bloodline. So they're not, there's going to be a lot of people around you that don't see your vision until you make shit happen. You think people saw my vision about frankincense and becoming a tarot reader and creating my own platform? No until I actually made something of it. And then people got on board. So that's why I don't really like play with that. Like I do what's best for my community. My community doesn't always know what's best, but sometimes they do. And sometimes they actually are advising me not to relinquish my control or my power, who I really am and to stay on course because they are in alignment with my dreams and they do root for me and they do believe in me. And they're gonna tell me, don't go in that direction. But either way, I feel like, um, or this, this romantic partner could be a reflection of some of you could be sacrificing your community, sacrificing your opportunities and your destined and fated path for love because you don't want to be alone anymore because you feel like if you were to stay true to your course, you would lose out on love. Instead of having faith that love is on your destined and faded path and that you, I told you guys, don't sell your soul to the devil. You never have to sell parts of yourself for love, for abundance, for your dream, for, for anything. Devil energy will get you to do that. You don't have to push away your family and your friends for love. You don't have to push away your romantic interest or love for, for opportunities in career. Like there, there's, there's, there's a lot of, yeah, I feel this energy, you guys feeling stressed. I'm also getting that some of you guys are coming out of a paradigm where stress is normal to you. So this is, this is coming out of this paradigm where we tell ourselves that it's normal to be stressed. So you go and you're stressed and you're frustrated about something. And then you go to your friends and they're like, oh, it totally makes sense why you're frustrated. It totally makes sense that you're stressed out. No, it doesn't. Don't program yourself into thinking that it's like saying you're busy i was watching some shit online and this woman was like there are people who run around and say that they're busy they're busy and they just limit their capacity and then there's people who work 16 hours a day and they're not saying that they're busy but they manage their capacity perfectly fine what do you tell yourself is normal there's needing to be a paradigm shift about what you tell yourself is normal stress, frustration, being too busy, all these things. This is part of your own paradigm. When I talk about a paradigm shift, I'm talking about the tapes that play what you tell yourself and how you think about yourself and other people. Okay. There's a real big shift occurring. Um, but anyways, let's just pull a few from the Oracle and then I'll wrap up. Okay. Thank you guys. Please like, share, subscribe. Patreon forward slash Queen Cup for daily weekly content, www.queencup.ca for all things frankincense, myrrh, all of that's in the description box below. I'm not accepting personal readings right now and all that scam bullshit that's going on, that really pisses me off, but it's fine. I left that to God and it wasn't going to go well for those people. They're just going to, they're just going to disappear. It's not actually a big group of people that are doing that. So don't worry. It's just going to disappear because they're going to, I, I'm not going to speak on that. You can watch the Virgo reading to the end, the end of the Virgo reading and the card that we pulled out here, it was the devil. And you'll see what's happening to those people. They shouldn't think they're, they're cashing checks. They're, they're writing checks that they can't cash. Okay. Every fucking dollar that they took and that they scammed will be taken from them. They'll struggle. If they, if they scammed a hundred dollars off of you, they are going to struggle to get that hundred dollars to even put 
fucking food on their table. It's not going to be pretty for them. This is the fucking time of karma. I've been telling you that guys that shit for a year and a half. But you guys don't listen to me. You guys, you guys don't listen to me. But it's fine. Anyways, thank you, Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, and guardian angels. I'm not accepting personal readings right now, but I will be soon. I just need to stabilize myself, and um, I will. But I've been feeling it. I've been getting a lot of requests, and um, I've been feeling the vibes. I want to connect with you guys one-on-one -on -one again. The Patreon's good. We connect a lot closer there, but doing it one-on-one, -on -one, you know, doing the lives. You guys know I haven't done pre-recorded. I've been doing live personal readings for over two years where I was setting it up on Skype and WhatsApp and actually doing this shit face to face with you guys. So, um, and that wasn't even trending then. People weren't doing it. They were only doing the recorded readings. And I'm like, no, I need to see these people live and direct. So I'm going to get back to doing it live and direct with you guys. Okay. Love. That's definitely the topic of this reading here. And I feel like it has to do with this choice. Love is very difficult. Love is painful. Love is, and again, that's my paradigm as well. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I just did it. I just did what I just told you guys not to do. What do you tell yourself? Because that will actually trap you into not manifesting it. It's difficult. It's painful. There's no point. Where all of those difficulties and that pain is worth it. It's worth it teaches you a lot. Release. Wow. Release, release your fears. Release old paradigms. Get creative. And the outlaw. I feel like some of you guys are going to be outlaws to your communities that are not actually in favor of a union. You might have people around you that aren't supporting a union because this person doesn't have enough money because this person um, has a certain particular background, is a certain particular race or religion. And I feel like you are releasing those social confines and expectations and you are becoming the outlaw in love. Because I do see with the Six of Swords, you and your partner embarking in love. And it looks like you guys are dolo. But that will only work if this love is a reflection of your destined and fated path, how you see yourself. So you're not having to sell yourself what you're having to release is not yourself, not your morals, not your values, not your beliefs, not your dreams and your aspirations. You're having to release social pressures. Social pressures. That traps you. Okay? What will society think? What will get me to be seen as successful and valuable in my community so that I have some kind of ranking and status? That is going to trap you into not moving forward in love. And I see you guys being an outlaw to that. <laughs> Some of you guys, the guys, your family doesn't support you because your partner is a fucking outlaw. Okay. And that, you guys need to work on that. All right. Share wisdom. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> I love you guys. That is your spread by beautiful Tauruses. Okay. Please like, share, subscribe. And until the next time I see you guys, keep letting your inner angels live. Mwah. Ciao.